One of the most common setups I use in Microsoft Access is a data sheet style report where I have a list of people or unique items and I can just click a button like this and open that specific identity in a form. Sounds so easy, but to someone who is new to Microsoft Access, it might be a little bit tricky. Rest assured, it only takes a few lines of code and it's not that bad. So let me show you how to do this. And by the end, you'll be a pro. So let's get right into it. All right, so we got a report that looks like this. It's data sheet style, and we just want to open up by some unique identifier. So we're going to use this employee ID, and that's what's going to filter in the form. So for example, this is employee ID three. We would want that to open if that was the line on the button in that report. Okay, so we're going to have to add a button, first of all. What we want to do is let's open this in design view. And let's add a label first so we know about where our button's going to be. Let's just give it a, a name so it's clear. We can just say open or something. Okay, kind of looks consistent with the other headers that we have right there. All right, so let's add a button. You can do a toggle button or a traditional button, the one with the axes. I'm going to do a toggle just because I think it looks cooler. Doesn't really matter. All right, so you can see each line has a button now. So what we'd want is when we click on it, so for example, employee ID 3, we'd want that to open in the form. So now we got to write a little bit of code. So let's go ahead and do that. So right click on there, go to properties, unclick, code builder. We're almost there. Okay, and start writing in our code here. So first we need to do a dim for employee ID report. That's gonna be a new variable we're gonna create and we're gonna make that an integer. And basically we're saying employee ID report is what employee ID is right there. See, literally that right there for that particular line. And just a little note there for you. All right, so now we want to do a do command to open the form. This is where we're going to filter by that employee ID or as we call it now, employee ID report. Okay, so we're skipping a few things there. So we're not going to do filter name. We're not going to worry about the AC form view, any of that. We're going to go right to the where condition. The where condition is basically how this happens. That's the actual filtering we care about. All right, so this where statement. So it's going to do employee ID equals three. That's going to be the... Where statement, as you can see, it opened up. So that's what we did with that. Let's try another one. Lady Diana here. So that was ID 30. That's what appeared on that row in the report. So basically creating a where statement for every row. That's how that works. It's really kind of neat. It's convenient. All right, let's look at this code one more time, just to be clear here. So this employee ID report, I'm just making it very clear what's in the report and what's in the form. And since they have the same name, it's just easier to distinguish. I think just more organized, honestly. And this employee ID that has the blue line right there, I just want to make sure that's clear too. So you see that in the forum, that's what corresponds to that. So even though they have the same name, we're kind of treating them differently. Some people don't care about this, but I think it's important. It's just good to be clear about what's in the forum and what's in the report. Now let's try this with last name. So you got to change a few things here. So we have to make this a string. First of all, we got to change any reference to employee ID. We got to make last name. So we'll call this last name report. Okay, and let's just copy and paste this in the spots that it was before for employee ID. We're going to replace it. Make sure we dim that as a string or that could cause problems. A lot of times I like to just start from scratch to avoid problems like this, but you know, that's fine. Depends on how big the code is for me. All right, so let's give this a try now. Let's try this by last name. Oh, there's something going on. Yeah, so what you got to watch out for is the syntax is different for numbers and dates and for strings. So we got to fix this. All right, so we want to add a single quote there. And after this, we want that and sign, double quote, single quote, double quote. It's a lot to handle sometimes, but uh, once you do it, you get the hang of it. If you have questions, just let me know. All right, so let's try this now. Red tape, anybody with the last name red tape, and there's only one in there, so it should work. Try this for last name Diana, and it works. Even though that's not really her last name. All right, instead of a unique value, what if we want to open something that has a value that more than one row had, but not all of them? So for example, a certain type of employee position, let's say. So let's create a button here, and we're going to create an input that's going to ask us for the position. It's going to enter everyone who has that in the form. 
So if you are an investigator or a project manager or whatever, those will open up in the form. All right, so let's go ahead and start our code here. This one's not that long. I want to just get this out of the way for simplicity to just minimize my distractions. I'll keep this other one up though. So we're going to dim position value. We're creating a new value, uh, making that a string. The original value is a string too. All right, so we're putting this inbox here and this is what our input box is going to say. So basically enter employee position to filter your form. Okay. And this enter position title right there, that's just the title, sort of the header. And we're going to do our do command, open form again, and that's going to be the value we put into position value. So that's going to be project manager or investigator, research assistant, whatever we had in that report. Whatever we type in, it's going to be part of the where condition. Okay, so a four out of 20, say our project managers, those four are going to open up in the form. They're going to be filtered. All right, so this is pretty simple. This is text-based, so you remember we just did a couple minutes ago. So let's give this one a try. Let's see what happens. So you can see the different positions there. So let's just highlight this one and copy it. We'll get all investigators, and there should just be two. So we'll paste that in there. Hit OK. And if we have two, everything went right. Yes, we have two. Awesome. Okay, dates are a little bit different, and... I normally wouldn't do this. I just want to be consistent, though. You're not going to normally have a lot of dates that are very unique, but you might. Uh, maybe a date of birth is pretty unique. So let's try this with dates. So I'm going to change up this button right here. Just say open our date, and that's going to be review date. Let's take this out. I do get confused sometimes, you know, when I'm working with some new code that's kind of similar. I just don't want to have any template issues and forget to change some. So we're going to get rid of that and we're going to create an input string and that's going to be our date. We're going to put in there in that box and this review date is going to convert the string to a date type. And so here's our input string like we had before. This is the thing that's going to pop up and say, please enter the annual review date. We're going to have them put it in this format and we're going to put the title enter our date. Now, if you just put single month, single day, and four digits for the year. It'll probably work, you know. I would just try to follow it though if you can, but just know that it probably will be fine. So now what we're saying is, can this be recognized as a valid date? So if it is, it's gonna continue. If not, we're gonna get an error. It's always a good thing to kind of tell people what's going on instead of just some random error. People freak out and will send you screenshots and stuff. And if you just do this, it'll be very clear what happened and they can just fix it on their own. Okay, so we're putting that title of the message box, kind of like we did with enter our day. We're doing that with this message box too. So we're putting the exit sub there if this happens. And then we're going to end the if statement there. And then finally, we're going to open the form, kind of like we did before. Okay, so putting in the form name, which is employees. That's what we did the last few examples as well. You do comma, comma, comma. The annual review date, that's what's in your form. And this next part is what we're entering in that input string. Okay, and so we have the format here. We're gonna specify the format to be two digit month, two digit day, four digit year. If somebody enters something else in there, like one digit month, it probably will still work on different formats, but nevertheless, it's good to just advise people how to proceed and put it in the format desired. So let's give this a try. Let's see what happens. Okay, let's just copy this and then put this into the input box, all right? So you can see right there, it's not in that format, but let's just see what happens. Will it work? And it still works. Now, if you're super paranoid, you can use some regular expressions to detect if the wrong format is entered and you can revise it like that. I just don't know if that's necessary, um, you know, but if you run into issues, that's a good idea. And if you need help with that, let me know in the comments, happy to help. But, you know, we did the correct method right there and it worked out just fine. And I'll check this out. What if we do kind of the uh, I guess you could say military style where you had the year first like that. Even that worked. So it probably will work, but it, it's just good to play it safe and instruct people how to enter the date. But hopefully you get the picture. Anyway, this should give you a general idea for how to open individual records based on specific criteria in a report or maybe just key identifiers in a row of data. And yeah, thanks for checking out this video and do me a favor and like, subscribe, comment, all that great stuff. And take care, everyone.